A lot has changed over the years, especially when it comes to medical practices and procedures. Some of these procedures were even once considered unethical and barbaric. From lobotomies to maggot therapy and even electric shock therapy. Let's talk about this and more only in today's video. Starting off this countdown, we have maggot therapy. Maggots were once used by military surgeons during the American Civil War. These doctors would apply live baby flies, or the fly larvae, to a soldier's wound, and it was said to disinfect and help heal the wounds. Now, why maggots? Well, they can dissolve up to 25 micrograms of infected tissue in under 24 hours. They also only attack the dead flesh and leave the healthy flesh alone. And believe it or not, but this practice is still around today. In 2004, it was approved by the FDA. Maggots are used on wounds that take a long time to heal, such as bed sores, ulcers, post-surgical wounds, or acute burns. In our ninth spot today, we have tonsil me. Who here has had their tonsils taken out? Anyone? Let me know in the comments below. Well, it's a good thing that you're alive now and not back in the day, because how they removed tonsils in 1828 was very gruesome. Basically, they used a tonsil guillotine. This was a device that was placed onto the tonsils and then it would close on it like a guillotine and just bam, chop it right off. Keep in mind, they didn't use freezing or numbing back then or general anesthesia. Nowadays, that's what they use when patients undergo this procedure, and they don't use that scary guillotine type device. In our eighth spot today, we have ECT therapy. Back in the day, shock treatment was used for a number of mental health issues. They even tried to use it to convert gay individuals to turn straight. On top of that, it was given to people without anesthesia, and the shocks they sometimes received were very, very high and painful, which was very unethical to say the least. Nowadays, ECT or electroshock therapy is used to help a number of individuals, including people that suffer suffer from severe treatment-resistant depression. Nowadays, ECT is done under general anesthesia and is given three times a week for three to four weeks. It apparently affects the chemicals in one's brain and nerve cells to help change their mood, sleep, and appetite patterns. In our seventh spot, we have bloodletting. Back in the day, it was believed that all your problems boil down to bad blood, like the Taylor Swift song. If you were sick, chances are that's because you had bad blood. And so they would do something known as bloodletting. Doctors would cut a person's vein and draw some of the blood. It's obviously a risky business, cutting open someone's vein, you know, as a result, a lot of people actually died from bleeding to death. Nowadays, bloodletting is still a thing, but it's done safely. It's done on patients with hemochromatosis, which means that they have an overload of iron in their body. When there's too much iron in one's blood, it can be toxic to their liver, heart, pancreas, and joints. So a doctor will use a needle to withdraw a pint or more of a patient's blood. They do it once or twice a week for several months or longer. In our sixth spot, we have the lobotomy. Back in the day, lobotomies were thought to cure severe mental illnesses like depression, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia. During a lobotomy, a doctor would drill a small hole into the patient's skull, aiming to sever the nerves in the frontal lobe. For the first lobotomy in the US, which was performed in 1936, the neurosurgeon drilled two holes in a person's skull and then stuck a needle into the holes and then swished it back and forth. This was supposed to cut all the bad connections in the brain but a lot of people suffered from brain hemorrhaging. Other people lost their lives or were left with permanent brain damage. To this day, lobotomies are still performed, but are much, much different. For example, we have cingulotomy, which is used to treat people with severe OCD. During this procedure, the doctor destroys overactive brain tissue carefully. This procedure is safe with only a few side effects. They are far more precise when targeting the bad brain tissue. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with trepanning. Now we've talked about this procedure before. Basically, it was thought that mental health issues or migraines were caused by a demon or evil spirit trapped inside of a person's brain. The only way to free this person from all their issues was to release release the demon into their head, so they would drill a hole into their skull to let the demon out. Now it sounds pretty wild, right? 
Well, it's still used today, but not for the same reason, okay? Doctors don't believe that we have demons trapped in our minds, causing us pain and suffering. A version of this procedure is used by neurosurgeons. They drill small holes into the skull if there ever is internal bleeding from trauma. It's also used for subdural hematoma, which is bleeding between the cover of the brain and the brain itself. It's also used to relieve intracranial pressure. In our fourth spot today, we have the leeches. Now, leeches were also used back in the day for bloodletting. If a person was ill, they would have leeches placed on their skin to suck out all the bad blood. In the early 2000s, the FDA cleared leeches to be part of a treatment for a condition called venous congestion. This is when blood collects in a part of one's body and the veins can't pump it back to the heart. So the leeches can extract the blood from that site so that more oxygen can reach it. Also, apparently leeches can prevent blood clotting as well. Moving on to number three, we have cataract surgery. Cataracts occurs when the proteins and fibers in one's eye breaks down. This causes their vision to become hazy or cloudy. In fact, cataracts is the leading cause of blindness worldwide. Now this surgery was around since 800 BC, but during that time, a person's eye was literally just punctured to remove the cloudy lens. And as you could imagine, this led to a series of complications and some even just became blind because of it. Nowadays, the surgery is very successful and much safer. Doctors don't just gouge your eyes and be like, you know, it might work or you might just go blind. Moving on to number two, we have the mercury cure. So we all know that mercury is very poisonous and it can kill you. Back in the day though, they did not know that. So mercury was used in everything from topical ointments to makeup, even in medicine. But long-term exposure to these products ended up killing people. They would develop mercury poisoning and die a slow, painful death. Nowadays, surprisingly, it is used as a dewormer and laxative. It's even used in some topical antiseptics to treat minor cuts and scratches. Now, it has been banned for use in the US, but it's still available in many other countries. And in our number one spot today, we have fecal transplantation. So in the fourth century, it was thought that diarrhea or food poisoning could be cured by taking stool from a healthy person and then giving it to the sick person. They would do so orally. I know, it's repulsive to even think about. By the 16th century, doctors had come up with a soup to help with these problems. The soup was called yellow soup and it contained dried or fermented stool of a healthy person. Today, stool transplantation is still around. It's called fecal microbiota transplantation. Basically, stool from a healthy person is transferred to the sick person via an enema or through a tube that's inserted into a person's stomach or small intestines. This is said to help restore the sick person's microbial balance in their gut. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. It was a pretty wild list. Let me know in the comments below which one of these procedures you thought was the craziest. That last one where they were, oh, the soup, oh, no. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below because sometimes I sneak into the comments and then I do a little sneaky reply back, so comment something down below right now while you're there smash that like button and subscribe to most amazing top 10 for more amazing videos i've been your host lindsay ivan and i'll see you when i see you bye